Welcome to, hey, <laughs> see, it's Jeff Gearling already here this morning. Uh, welcome to Vlog Thursday, and it's number 351. I am at Vid Summit, so I'm keeping this kind of short. I was going to do it at night, but I realized each night, as typical for a packed hotel full of technology people, the internet is terrible. Uh, and the internet with over 3,000 people, that's just what I was trying to figure out. This is how many people are using the Whova app, not the full amount of attendees. I've heard a couple of people say we have over 3,000 people here at Vid Summit, but at least signed up just for the app for the conference is uh, 2,420. Uh, among those people are a Jeff Gearling is here, and I got to meet him in person, uh, which was really cool. We, me and Jeff had a conversation. We've been sharing some of the you know fun details we've been learning here at Vid Summit. And to, you can go to vidsummit.com, figure out more about what it is. But essentially, it's a creator meetup for lots of creators, primarily YouTube, but there's other people here creating other content for other things. Uh, definitely really fun. I'm learning a lot. I, I really like getting to meet people in person. There's as much as I'm a technology driven person, if you will, I think there's a lot of nuance left on the table, if you will, that I would describe that you miss when you just do a zoom or some type of video conference meeting sitting down at the table and meeting people is always a little bit better or maybe a lot better that's why i took the time to come down here to dallas texas i'll be here a few more days and if you're here at vid summit say hi a few people said you looked busy i said what do you mean i'm busy i'm here to meet people uh i i i should like get a shirt next time i've seen some people say like hey i'm a video editor on your shirt and i'm like i should just get shirts as i'm here to meet people maybe <laughs> you know <clears throat> uh i don't mind people coming up talk to me asking questions that's really why i'm here is to hang out do some learning collaborate with other creators and uh my voice sounds done for i know uh it's day one and uh my voice is gone well technically because there was the uh first the first day uh, was the kickoff party. Then day two, I probably will be voiceless by Friday. So, <laughs> yeah, and Jeff's right. This, there is no, there is no time I can think of where I'm at a conference where I wish the music was louder. I can think of many, many times. Uh, yeah, ninety dB in the main hall. I can think of a constant time when I want the music quieter. When I want to have a conversation. I've never understood this because this is not just this conference. This is the conferences you go to for tech. They have the same exact problem. You go to a tech conference. I was at a CompTIA conference in Chicago. I wanted to leave because the music was so loud. I don't know. In We found a corner where the music wasn't loud. There was a speakers they put over there. I don't know if someone disconnected the speakers or they broke, but I was just like realizing more and more people were huddled over in this one area um, which made it a little bit louder. But I laugh because the reason so many people over there is because we just wanted to talk to each other. And the, you know, cranking the music up, like, cool that you had a live band. Thank you for accommodating people who want to dance. Awesome. That is, it was a big venue. We didn't need speakers outside of the live band area. <laughs> and yeah, that's just, uh, that's some of the challenge. Like it causes me to lose my voice because we all have to talk at this level that my ears are ringing. It also causes mentally me to be so overstimulated i'm happy to get back to my hotel room uh, at some point because i'm like i just need quiet i just <laughs> but i it's been great it's been fun um especially i got to meet not just jeff i met to meet someone else a few people might recognize um i had a good conversation with network chuck super cool guy in person it you know one thing is i've talked to chuck more than once outside of his videos he's much calmer in person. Let's just say that if if you look at Never Trucks videos and you're like, he's really hyper, I think he, and I've seen the jokes, he's had too much coffee or whatever. But if you meet him in person, he's very, he's much more chill person. Uh, we had some good business conversation. Uh, and yeah, it was, it is nice talking to some of these people like a one on one in person like that. Um, I also got to meet and he's also fellow, um, IT, well, was a fellow IT business owner, which was uh, my friend Pete. He is also turned cool YouTuber. If you look at notabusinesscoach.com, uh, he's got his business coaching stuff, which I think he still does some of. Um, he, young guy, awesome, uh, that he kind of converted 
you know, I kind of jealous because I wish I would have started YouTube a long time ago. I feel like the old man here because <laughs> I definitely, it's not that there's not other people my age, but I am definitely, I'm definitely on the other side where it, this is a majority um, younger person conference, if you will. But hey, you know, it's still a lot of fun. Uh, my only complaints besides the music about the conference, so I'll throw those out there for anyone wondering, um, the ticketing system is atrocious. They they need to fix that. They could hire an event company. Um, waiting two hours for a ticket you bought online months ago, that's dumb and just poor planning. The conference itself is good. Just the how you get the tickets is a mess. And that's my only really big complaint about the uh, conference. It's not too big of a complaint. It's it's a complaint, though, because it, I, I, I uh, get aggravated greatly when it comes to disorganization. But at least I'm meeting lots of cool people. Uh, that's been fun. They have like a vendor area. So I got to talk to, I'm using StreamYard for this. I got to talk to the people at StreamYard. That was pretty cool. And <clears throat> uh, so meeting some of the vendors and things like that. And it, it's not like the vendors you meet at a, I'm going to stop wobbling as much if I move this over here, I think. There we go. But Oh yeah, I got I got a Streamyard duck, so uh, I, that was kind of cool. Actually, uh, one thing I'll say for the people at Streamyard was they really engaged, like wanted a lot of feedback on people that used it. So I had a good conversation with like two or three of the people. And when it comes to branding, that was actually kind of neat. They even had uh, the the girls had earrings that were little ducks, uh, the StreamYard ducks. So I was like, okay, this is kind of like everything they had was well branded. And I thought that was, uh, I thought that was actually kind of cool. Um, I like companies when they have like a good plan like that. And everyone was, as you usually find at a booth, everyone was really nice, hoping they come up with some new features and stuff like that. On to the tech side though, the one of the big reasons I'm coming here is always to think about storytelling and strategy. You know, I seen Jeff Gearling commenting and I, I imagine a lot of you, if you watch um, any tech videos, Jeff Gearling comes up a lot. And I think he does a really good job of putting together narrative and story. And I got it. I've been slowing down a little bit in the videos because I wanted to really think about how I put together some of the story. I just want to improve that. So stopping and thinking as opposed to the brute force of Tom just hits record and makes a lot of videos and kind of narrowing that down. I'm actually going to a, a class today on script writing uh, so I can figure out how to write a script. I'm terrible at it. And my videos not really scripted, they're bullet pointed. So sometimes in my teleprompter, so I get some long model number, right? I'll have a bullet point and maybe a model number of a part, uh, but I don't really write out the script as well, but I'm working on like, what's the happy balance for myself. And that way my content has a more flow to it. That's actually one of the reasons I stopped doing some of the wiring and cabling videos. Cause I felt some of the ones I did, um, one took me extreme amounts of time to put together, to try to do it. And I'm like, how can I make that process a little bit, uh, more concise and then bring it in the story. I actually like some of the older videos I did, but I also know some of those videos took me like two weeks of work and I, it's challenging. And maybe that's the stuff I need to split out and find an editor for is figuring out how to sort out. The problem is, this is where the challenge always comes in. If I want to do a wiring type of video with an editor, you have to have the editor understand where to insert insert which part of B-roll. So you have to very clearly label all the B-roll for this is what this part of the project is. And uh, that's what makes it really challenging on there. So it's uh, definitely all the little things you have to think about as a content creator to put this together, like the behind the scenes. So this is, uh, I, I did say, it did say Tech Talk Live Q&A, but I'm actually going to keep this relatively short because I have to go to a uh, well, I want to get back to the conference, uh, which starts in about half an hour. Oh, 45 minutes. 45 minutes. And we got to grab breakfast. Oh, yeah, we got to we gotta grab breakfast as well. But I am, if you are a creator that is here, please, I would love to connect with any of you. And, and if you're not here, you're like, hey, I'd like to work with Tom uh, on some tech topics. I'm a really easy person to get a hold of. There's a contact form on my site. Uh, there's Twitter. I don't give out my email because that just invites spammers. Um, but the contact form just goes through HubSpot and lands where it's supposed to land. So if anyone contacts me through that, but um, the other places though are fine, whatever, LinkedIn, Twitter, I have all those links down below. So definitely if you want to reach out, connect and uh, collaborate on things. Uh, but I'm also, you know, uh, 
going to be connecting hopefully with a couple more people here to do some content. Um, I've never really, you know, it's funny because, you know, Chuck said he's more than willing to do a video with me, but I, I'll be honest. And me and Chuck, we kind of laugh because we both have the same thing. Like, Hey, cool. We both do tech content, but what do you want to do together is what sometimes the question is. And that, that's always my challenge with collaborations is what should I collaborate on? Talking head is easy where I've joined like Jeff on his live streams or people have joined my live streams and you know, I, that's perfectly fine. But the harder part is like, what would two creators create together? Uh, I don't know. Um, unless we are, physically building a project together, which isn't always the case. It, it's hard to say. So nonetheless, I'm going to keep this short because I do go get breakfast. Um, the first talk is one that's kind of interesting. Um, I will, I see, it's not really my place to do chair reviews. And, but why is it important? We all have to sit in chairs as tech people. Uh -huh. I actually think Jeff is, Jeff came up with this ZFS road trip to level one techs. Yes. I actually think uh, Wendell had mentioned this, and before I get to the chair thing, Wendell had mentioned talking about, hey, why don't I create a storage place for other creators to store their data offsite? You know, and with prices going up with cloud storage, why not use Wendell? <laughs> and, you know, Wendell's got a place, and Wendell doesn't live, um, he's in the Kentucky area. So me and Jeff, who live opposite of the Kentucky area, could meet up and me, me, Wendell and Jeff doing a ZFS collaboration. I think that'd be fun. Uh, I think that'd make a fun offsite storage. And I, that might be a good uh, collaboration video. Uh, plus, I just, I've, you know, I've met Wendell in person several times. He's, he's, I actually, I'll go further. I've been to a conference a couple of times with Wendell and sat around and just talking to him. We usually with a group of people for like three or four hours, which is just really cool. Wendell's an awesome person just to talk tech with for two or three hours. It's, it, I always wonder if we should hit record on that because uh, he, he's such a wealth of knowledge on things like that. But yeah, um, that might be a collaboration. Back to the chair thing. The first person I'm talking to this morning has an office. If you type in any high end chair reviews in office furniture reviews, this particular person comes up, but they have an interesting kind of problem. They have a lot of views on their chair videos. People don't subscribe. And why would they subscribe? I don't subscribe. So I, he's going to offer a lot of the insights of how he built a company reviewing office furniture because it's a critical thing. I need a nice chair. I bought a really fancy chair based on the video. I used their affiliate link, but it's not something you subscribe to. So it creates this kind of strange niche in YouTube where you can't really ever get a high subscriber count, but you get a high view count because uh, I was looking and, and they did a great job on title. If you type in, and this is one of the easy ways to find them, uh, if you like type in best chair to sit cross-legged in, and that's how I sit frequently. So like they knew they were building the video for someone like me. And I think I like a high-end chair and I end up with, I always use low end chairs, one of those, well, I don't want to spend too much money on the wrong chair. So I keep using these cheap chairs that kind of fall apart over a year or two. Uh, but when one of them finally fell apart again, it was making noises. I'm like, all right, time to invest in a good chair. And I didn't want to get another Herman Miller Aeron chair like I had before. So uh, the chair guy. So I'm going to actually get to meet, the, he's the first speaker. And I find it to be an interesting thing. So I think it's going to be kind of cool. Oh, let's see. I'll answer two more questions here before I go to breakfast. With fiber getting into more areas, very possible uh, now to have offsite storage. Yes, uh, I have been thinking about it as well. Uh, can peer with me for free traffic. Yeah, the internet keeps getting slowly faster here in America. All my European friends are laughing in one gig by <laughs> symmetrical transfer. Uh, I, I, maybe not everywhere in Europe. I know I've, I've had a lot of commentary from people that a lot of areas have faster. Uh, it's very wildly different depending on where you live here in the U S whether or not you have a fast or slow internet connection, uh, but yes, they are slowly catching up and this is going to make it a lot easier for you to transfer. And, and for some people, um, there's a collaborative, I've seen more people asking this, and I think this might be a fun topic is, you know, how to back up your NAS to your friend's house. And, that saves you on cloud. You can set up something encrypted. So you, you know, you don't want the, the, the goals. And I, as I would define them, because this is a video topic I've been thinking about is how to back up to your friend's house, but also have it encrypted. So you do a trade because your friend wants to back up to you. You want to back up to your friend. You can figure out how many people you want involved in this, but there's methodology which you can not only do this, you can do this and have it. So you don't 
have each other's data. Like it's encrypted before send. So you have securely backed it up. There's no way if, if your friend tried to pick through things, they would have access to your data. But now you both have created an offsite backup and you've saved yourself a few dollars in cloud fees. So um, that is a topic I've been thinking about. It might be a uh, pretty good video topic. But with that being said, um, what do I have here? All right, making sure I have all the messages taken care of. I'm going to go to breakfast. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. And uh, we have to wait for all the big ISPs to milk us and uh, milk us to death before they start milking asymmetrical speeds. Yeah, it, there's some pain in it. And the one thing I mentioned, and one of the things about doing it with a friend is usually your friend lives and granted, this is not data center level backups. They may live geographically close. And that's what me and Jeff would do is the backups would be um, you seed the backup. So you drive to your friends to do the initial seed, but then your data rate at the rate you which are creating data means it's not too terrible. So cool, cool, I got, you know, 12 terabytes or 18 terabytes to back up. That's a lot of data at first, but if you're only creating a few hundred gigs a week or whatever that number might be, that's not too hard to transfer and synchronize. And if there was ever one of those incidents where like, well, I've completely lost my data. I have to go to a offsite. I can drive over to my friend's house and grab the copy and get it because obviously downloading it would take a long time. So uh, there's a lot of merit to that. It's something I think it's going to be a, a fun topic, but leave all your thoughts and comments down below. I will possibly do another live stream on Saturday when I get back. Uh, and if you're at Vid Summit in Dallas, say hi. I will be here uh, all day today. Today's the last day of the conference. All right, and thanks.